I don't want life to beat me. I've seen life beat so many people, most people around me, life beat them. When you ask them what happened, what do most people say? Life happened, man. I, I had it there, and then this happened, and that. I don't want life to beat me. We republished this tweet from The Numbers Game on our channel page, and it says Squid Game creator wrote the show in 2009 but was rejected by studios for 10 years. He once had to stop writing the script and sell his $675 laptop due to money troubles. And today, Squid Game is number one, I guess, in 90 countries and is set to become the most watched show in Netflix history. What is your reaction to this, the story, this chain of events? I mean, if it's true, it's awesome. Um, I, I, it's, it's that feeling of, of the never say die attitude. No matter how much rejection you get, you still keep plowing forward. And I love those stories. I do. Um, I think that I always, if the story is is completely third party, then I, I feel that it's it's an awesome story of, of perseverance. But if it's a a Netflix story, which I I, I have, I'm a Netflix subscriber. I, I definitely watch it. But they can tell you what's number one, and you just have to believe that it's true. We have no way of verifying that it's number one, <laughs> only that they said it was number one. I always wonder that whenever I'm looking at the, the like, this is number one for the week and number 10 for the week. I'm like, how do we really know that that's number one and number 10? It's just because we went there and they told us that it was. So, um, but like I said before, if it's the story, if the story is true and it's, you know, it's a third party story, that's a great story of perseverance. Um, I, I think that we, people are born with a lot of quit in them for some reason, I don't know, or maybe it's developed over the years, but when they start to reach those obstacles or any kind of adversity, it's, it's very easy to, to, to give up. And unfortunately, I think that we all have people in our lives who, who care about us greatly, they care about us deeply, and they will see us going through some adversity and it's like, oh man, it's been years, you probably should, maybe, maybe you should start thinking about something else because they care about you and they want you to be successful. And, they don't want to see you kind of beating your head against the wall. And they'll sometimes advise you to ah, maybe maybe throw in a towel on this one. And I'm pretty sure he had that person next to him telling him that. And when I always hear about people who have those advisors with them, I always say find new advisors. Because the only thing that people should help you understand is why you care so deeply about what you're doing. That's always the real question. Why do you care so deeply? And after that, they should just be trying to help you achieve whatever the goal is you're trying to achieve or give you the best advice they could on how to achieve it, you know? I know you said you left your uh, job at, as a marketing coordinator at a nursing, skilled nursing facility, mm -hmm. but have you ever been tempted to give up on films as, as many roller coaster rides as you've been on, it sounds like? No. No. I, I've, I've had times where it was tough and... Ultimately, you had to feed the safe. You know, you, you have to say, okay, you know, I gotta focus on putting money over here and this and that. But I've, I, I, they always say that the, the, the line between uh, self-belief and delusion is very thin. <laughs> and I must be riding that line because I, I've just, I've always believed, especially after I left the skilled nursing facility, that it's this or bust. Is this or bust? And I'm very, very fortunate that I've gotten to a point where now I self-finance all of my projects. And, you know, I, I think that I, I can service two different demographics. I can service the horror crowd, which is what most people know my work uh, from is horror and, and that like 80s style horror. And then I can also serve a niche of people who are like me, who like the kind of stuff that I like. And that's a smaller niche, but I can still serve that niche. And that's where I get to um, really be the most creative that I could possibly be. But that took time to get to that point. And it took a lot of sacrifice to get to that point. And I think there are moments in everybody's life where they realize that man, this is very difficult. And I wonder if the juice is worth the squeeze at this point. But it is my belief that once you start to feel that, 
that's when you should be your most um, decisive in going forward. And the reason is because success and everything you're looking for is just on the other side of that. It's, it's when you don't have the teeth to keep going and you give up, you, you cut yourself short and you always wonder, what if I had just kept going? What if I had just given it another this or made that one extra phone call? But I never want those questions. And what I found is right when you have, right when you get past that point, everything I was looking for was just on the other side. It was just on the other side. And I'm starting to reap a lot of the benefits of that perseverance and continuously going forward. Would you say that's one of your biggest fears is the fear of regret? You, you don't ever want to get to a certain point and go, I wish I had just done this, tried harder? Or? Um, no, I, I think more than anything, I just, I don't want to feel like, and it's gonna sound really weird, but I don't wanna feel like life beat me. I don't want life to beat me. I've seen life beat so many people, most people around me, life beat them. When you ask them what happened, what do most people say? Life happened, man, I, I had it there, and then this happened and that. I don't want life to beat me. I take everything that comes with life and I try to use it to my benefit, everything. You know, at this point, my wife is 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 pregnant, right? Guess who's going to be in my movie? It's gonna be my, my kid. <laughs> He's going to be the star of the movie. You take everything that's coming to you and you use it. Whatever happens in my life, I use it. If it's if it's something crazy and wild happen, it's a story in the script. If this happened, in the, it's in the script. I'm taking everything that comes it comes towards me and I'm using it. I'm using it as fuel. I'm using it as something to keep moving forward. Life won't beat me. It won't. We're hoping to get your reaction to this comment, and that is, this is not a triumph. It's a tragedy, and it's a sign of just how much the industry needs to do better because creative, original work should not be just a long struggle to put it out, referring to the Squid Game. Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on that? Um, he didn't let life beat him. No, he didn't let life beat him, but <laughs> to say it's not a that. triumph, it's a tragedy. It's like, wow, really? I, I don't, I, look, you, <laughs> everything that we do, especially in this industry, everything you're trying to do is met with resistance and opposition. It just is. It is. If the way I try to explain it to certain people when they say, oh, it's nepotism and this person and that, and this is why I can't get in. And Okay, let's say you are trying to, to get through the door, okay? In every film I've worked with, let's say we take the collective of everybody I've worked with in that film, maybe 7% of them are people I actually work with again. Maybe, okay? And it all has to do with the way I run my set and what I expect from people. In the end, not everybody is gonna operate at that same level, okay? And while I can be very chill, I can also be pretty intense, you know? Now, because I'm very passionate about what I'm doing. So if that's the case, after a certain amount of time, I'm hopeful that the percentage of people that I'm working with is growing so that now I'm carrying over most people from one project to the next. Why am I doing that? Because these are the people that I know. These are the people that I trust, okay? And I wanna keep them next to me and I wanna keep them working with me. So when the next person comes along and they say, well, guess what? I can do this and I can do that. I say, you probably could and you're probably great at it. But then I would have to take a chance. And maybe on this project, I'm already taking these chances. I can't afford to take that chance. And that person can see that as an obstacle to their growth and to their success because they couldn't get that position on that film. They couldn't get that thing out there. And if they go to more and more people like me who begin to accumulate a nice team that they work with, a, very t a team that makes everything work smoothly, they're gonna meet that same opposition, right? And it will become a game in terms of trying to find that crack 
to squeeze in to get whatever it is that you're trying to, to get made, made. So when people speak of the struggle to get things done, that's really the struggle. The struggle is, first of all, he's written something, right? And he has to get it in front of someone to read it. Well, guess what? There's hundreds and thousands of other scripts that are trying to be read. Everybody's trying to get their stuff made. The key is going to be the perseverance and to keep going. And that, to me, is the triumph of the story. As I said, if it's, if it's the true story and it's you know a third party and they're talking about it, to me, that is a triumph. That's not a tragedy. It's a triumph. You took something that is not a very, um, it's not a cheap story to make. Like, you can't go out and get a, a camera phone and shoot that. Like, it doesn't work the same. He's going to need a serious budget. Guess what? That's even more competitive. Because to get people to spend the, the millions of dollars that it's going to take to make that and market that, that's tough. It's very competitive. And it shouldn't be easy. Because if it were easy, it wouldn't be worth it. So, excuse me, sorry. Um, I, I disagree with that. It's, it's, not a, it's not a tragedy. It's a triumph. What was behind door number one, what we didn't tell you what was missing from that tweet, mm -hmm. um, is that director Huang did not stop during those 10 years. He kept working and he wrote and directed, I guess, three projects mm -hmm. during that time. And a lot of people, um, they may have just been stuck on that first one mm -hmm. and, and trying to make that one happen. So he for whatever reason, kept going and made other work. And I, I don't know the exact story of how it happened, but mm -hmm. um, it sounds like he wasn't going to let life beat him down either. So Yeah, like and that. it's a story of perseverance. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he, he may feel that it was a tragedy. He may, because you know, two people looking at the same event can see two totally different things, right? To me, that's not a, that's not a tragedy. To me, that's a triumph. And hearing that he made other projects while he was trying to get that one made even further, you know, uh, solidifies that. It's it's perseverance at its best, and it's never giving up. And his plan A, I don't think, was just to make Squid Game. His plan A was to to be successful and get something made, and that's exactly what he was getting done. Squid Game just took a little bit longer than the others, but. Ultimately, he got that one done as well. When you were on your way out from the nursing home, did mm -hmm. people try to talk you out of leaving? Yes. Yeah. But I always make sure that I seek first to understand and then to be understood. And I could understand why they didn't want me to go. Because, you know, I was a salesman and I was pretty, you know, decent at what I did. So... They didn't want me to leave uh, because then that meant that they would have to find another salesperson and then they would have to take a gamble, you know, and see if that person would work out. And, and when it comes to the healthcare industry, especially when it's end of life and it's, it's uh, you know, assistant living facilities, it's skilled nursing facilities, home health and hospice, it's super competitive. It's super competitive. So you need very aggressive salespeople. And that was ultimately why they didn't want me to go. I mean, I think there were a couple people who just like talking to me every day sure. <laughs> and those people didn't want me to go. And, and I think a few of the patients, but I think, or residents, I should say. But um, for the most part, it was, it was because of my skills that they didn't want me to leave. And once I understood that, I said, that's even more of a reason to, to, to kind of leave and not feel too bad about it, you know. Well, they tried to talk Jeff Bezos out of making Amazon, so. Well, there you there go. There you right? go. <laughs> <laughs>